are just waking up with our kids and we're getting them breakfast and what an opportunity to start the day well with everybody at the breakfast table and and um, and just begin the day in hope begin the day speaking life and being thankful for the kids and telling the kids okay kids we're gonna be thankful today what are you thankful for already and just having a conversation of hope even at your breakfast table and then some of us are getting ready to go to work some of us are already at work and that crowd needs you that crowd needs your attitude of hope and then maybe some of you are going shopping today or maybe your business has suffered incredible challenges during this time and that business needs your hope so our theme today is be the hope in your crowd today we're going to numbers that's in the old testament and we're going to talk about spies i mean when i open up this word there's so much hope in the bible and there are so many encouraging stories and i thank god that he gives us in tools and stories and hope in his word so we're going to numbers chapter 13 and 14 and i'm not going to read everything but i am going to point some things out but when you have time go to numbers read 13 and 14 we're going to talk about caleb and joshua they certainly had hope in the crowd that God set them up with. Beginning in verse 1, uh, the subtitle of this in my Bible, it says, The spies incite rebellion, exploring Canaan. And verse 1, The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe send one of his leaders, Verse 3, so at the Lord's command, Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. These are their names. And he goes on to name them. And there is Caleb and Joshua among the 12. They end up being 12, 12 spies. And we're going to have two, but we're going to have one that we're going to focus on right now that has God's perspective and must be filled with hope. It says, starting in verse 17, when Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, go up through the Negev on the hill, into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good? Is it bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are these trees on it or not? Are there trees on it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. Verse 21, so they went up and they explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as Rehob toward Lebo Hamath. Excuse me if I say all of these wrong. Remember, I'm not a scholar, I'm a follower. <laughs> um, and so they begin to explore. And they do get some grapes, but I want to move on to the report starting in verse 26. And the subtitle here is Report on the Exploration. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jezebites, the Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. And if I'm not mistaken anything with an eye at the end of it is not good so basically the fear in those few passages of scripture is apparent but here's caleb here's caleb a young man full of hope and he says in verse 30 first of all he stands up it says then caleb silenced the people before moses and said we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it and I want to stop right there for a minute because 
actually I'll read down to 32. But the men who had gone up with them, we can't attack those people, they said. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites, and they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people saw there are of, no wait, I'm sorry. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw Nephilim, we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. Interesting, Caleb did not see that at all. Joshua probably didn't see that at all too. But to, only two out of the 12 had God's perspective, had God's hope of glory living in them, had Holy Spirit hovering on them. And Caleb had so much that he silenced. He stood up and said, uh-uh, no, this is not what I saw. We can do this. And so it says down here in the study app, imagine standing before a crowd and loudly voicing an unpopular opinion. Caleb was willing to take the unpopular stand to do as God had commanded. To be effective, when you go against the crowd, you must, number one, have the facts. Caleb had seen the land himself. Two, have the right attitude. Caleb trusted God's promises to give Israel the land. And three, state clearly what you believe. Caleb said, we can certainly do it. I want to go down and now in chapter 14, beginning in verse 8, it says, if the Lord is pleased, this is, this is again, Joshua and Caleb now are talking. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will swallow them up. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord is with us. Joshua and Caleb knew the Lord is with us, was with them. And they had what it what needed to, they had what it took to, to get the job done. And they weren't afraid. They plowed through all the negativity and all the other spies and then I love, if you go on to 14, this is what, this is where I want to end. And again, read 13 and 14 by your son, by yourselves. Verse 24 says, the Lord is speaking now. And the Lord says, but because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. That is a powerful promise, but because my servant Caleb has a different spirit, follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to, and his descendants will inherit it. Oh, Lord, help us to be the, the one that stands out in the crowd that has your perspective. And so today, there's a crowd that we're going to be part of. It could be you and your spouse it could be you and your children it could be you and whoever wherever you go wherever you roam today and i love the fact i love those questions that's a good place to start even asking about your crowd you know start in the questions of 19 what kind of land do they live in is it good is it bad what kind of town do you live in is it good is it bad do they have hope? Are they hopeless? And that gives you ammunition to pray about. I mean, if you live in a hopeless neighborhood, if your family is hopeless, pray that they become hopeful. Pray that Holy Spirit pours out a spirit on them, that, that change would come. Be the hope in your surroundings today. And God will be pleased because he's looking for the hope carriers in the community. What if during one of these peaceful protests, somebody stands up and Holy Spirit just unctions them to break out in song and to pray for the community together. And it has happened. We live in a very peaceful place and, and we have protests, but they're very peaceful. There are people that know the right way. 
and you may be one of them. So you being the one that stands out in the crowd, that's our challenge today. You being the one that stands out in your grocery store, when you're among people that are afraid, people that are so in the cloud of the despair, be the hope to them. Say, no, you know, I know all this, but God, but God, let us all be the hope carrier that says, but God today, be the hope in your crowd today, friends. I want to pray for us. Father, I thank you for Caleb. I thank you that he was the one that stood out in the crowd. I thank you that you, Holy Spirit, came on him and he stood up and silenced the crowd. I ask you, God, that that would be us today. That you could trust us to be the voice in the crowd that brings life, that brings faith, that brings hope. That changes the atmosphere wherever we go today. I pray for this. I pray for your strength today, Holy Spirit. It's not done in our own strength. That we will fail miserably. But in your strength, we don't have to fail miserably. We can have victory in this day. I praise you. I thank you. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day.